These are my top 10 Instagram pics for 2019, but in this video, I wanted to share with you my personal pics from other artists who use DIY paint this year. It's impossible to narrow it down to just 10. I hope you enjoy them. I will put links to everybody in the description box. Some of these projects, I am going to attempt to recreate in the future. Keep your eye on the projects. Let me know which ones you would like to see me recreate. The very first one is Elsie Lane Boutique. She's a DIY retailer. Her name is Debbie Fimmer. It looks like what I was attempting to do in the last video with the watercolor spray bottle technique. I am almost positive that Debbie did this with her brush. Here's a clip of her talking about what inspired this piece. Debbie Fimmer here with Elsie Lane Boutique. That desk, I painted it in Hay Sailor and I sealed it with Big Top and I had it in my back room. Every time I walked by it, I thought, no, I don't like that. I don't like it. It's not me. It's not what I normally do. I can do better. I always want it to be something that somebody will love, but I never can control what I'm gonna do. I just paint things until it's pretty, and then I stop. When it's pretty, that's when I stop. I wanted to do like a dark, stormy scene, but in brighter colors, colors that you wouldn't normally choose for uh, a beach scene like that. It just came together. Honestly, that was my inspiration for it. This is my closet. <laughs> this is my closet. I don't know why I'm in my closet. I guess there's just no other quiet place in this house. Thank you so much. Bye. So she has mastered the soft blendy look. I am so wanting to be able to figure out how to do this. I am gonna bring Debbie on in the future. We'll see if she can help me. If you are anywhere near Spokane, Washington, go see her at her store. Why am I turning red? The sun is going down. Oh, great. Okay, I might have to move to a different spot. Next on my list is Karen Russell, and she is from the Noble Willow. When I first saw this picture of her console table, it looked like a watercolor painting. Everything about it, the backdrop and the accessories and the way she staged it, the whole thing looked like art. Is this actually painted furniture or is it a painting of painted furniture? Hi, I'm Karen with The Noble Willow. Debbie asked me to pop on here. Some tips on how I staged that piece. So first off, I want to say have fun. Make it just your reward for all the hard work you just put into that piece. I had my, my grand dog, Cal Doggo, have a total of 44 pictures that I took. The key for me is balance. That was such a large, bright piece that I wanted large, bright pops of color to balance it. I rearranged, took items on, took items off. The dog came in halfway through. I just took his bed, threw it up against the piece, tossed his ball in there and started shooting. Trust yourself. If, if it doesn't look right to you, it's probably not right yet. If I don't love it, I don't expect anybody else to love it. So I just keep at it. I'll spend a good hour. I believe I took these photos at 10:15 in the evening, so it was dark. I have a ring light. I also have an app. I use all of the filters. I use the contrast. I use the warmth. I just play with all of the filters until it looks like the actual piece of furniture. Have fun, trust yourself, balance, and lighting. Thanks everybody, have a good day, bye. And Karen is also a DIY retailer. The name of her Facebook page is The Noble Willow. This piece involves two artists. Very next video that we're gonna do, I am gonna recreate this piece. I've been working on it with Stephanie and Melissa, but this is the story. Melanie Whitaker from Windmill Vintage Designs. She took an old vintage sofa and she stripped it down to like, just down to the bare bones. And then she put this plank wood on the seat and on the back. And I thought it was absolutely genius. And then 
Her customer, who is also named Melanie, came in and she wanted to recreate Melanie's look, but then she took it to the next level. And this is what Melanie Mel created. So stay tuned next week to see if we actually pull this off. Pick number four, BJ has a business called Junked Up. She is also a DIY retailer. She just started her YouTube channel. I'm gonna link it up above. BJ used Carnival Red and the IOD transfer called Midnight Garden. I love how she staged it. I love how she left some of it unpainted and then continued to put stencils on it. I need to put this pen down. I feel like I'm stabbing you guys with it. Number five is from Josie. Josie Seifker from Paint Pixie. Oh. Dion is asking me when my birthday is. I'm not gonna tell her. It looked like Italian pottery. And she took all of these candy molds and the paper clay, and she put it as a border around a mirror, and then she did the watercolor technique on it. And she is making a video as we speak showing how to do this. I am gonna link to that video as soon as it's done. So what inspired me to do this mirror behind me? There. How about some Italian pottery? Capo de Monte. They make porcelain florals and roses. I think at the time I didn't realize it until Debbie mentioned it looked like Italian pottery and then I realized, oh my gosh, that's it. Colors were also inspired by this bay. You know, that one. Anyway, I hope you can be inspired by things that you see every day in your own home. Number six is Connie Himmer from The Painted Photographer, another DIY retailer. I love this piece because she posted it in the dead of winter. It's out in the snow and I just loved how she staged it. Go check out her page so you can see all of her projects because they're all amazing. Number seven is Monica Mercer. Monica's store is called Brush Up. She created this beautiful black, gorgeous piece with DIY paint and she used the um, iron orchid transfers, these pink soft roses. I think it's floral parasinesis. Monica Mercer from Brush Up. I will link her up above and down below. Number eight is something that I saw just last week. It came sliding in at the end of the year. She took something that's very ordinary and normally very ugly, something that you would wanna hide in your home because it's not attractive. So I'm gonna post the before and the after. She took an old vintage file cabinet. You could do this with the modern metal ones and she painted it and she put the transfers on it. And this is by Patty Richardson of vintage upcycled and more. I love this piece because she took something that's normally ugly and she made it so pretty that I wanted to go out and buy a file cabinet just so I could do this to it. Number nine is from someone who is very special to me. Hold on. Number nine is from my assistant manager, Stephanie Maservi. If you watch the videos that we post every Friday, you know who Stephanie is. You've seen her. She's the cutest thing ever. Her business name is Valiant Heart Vintage, and Stephanie just painted this desk. She made her own color, and she put it just on the legs and just on the top, and she's so good at the blending. This is her desk. It's absolutely beautiful. It's for sale in our store right now. I found her up in Long Beach at a flea market that I love to attend. One of the first things that drew me in were those big, chunky, sexy legs and I knew that they needed to be another color from the rest of the piece. Bohemian blue, a little bit of Monet's garden, some sea glass, and a little bit of tarnished pearl created that teal color that you see on the legs and the top. I really wanted to use this border that runs along the, the bottom of this transfer. I'm so incredibly honored that you love it and that you're sharing it today and I just can't wait till she finds her forever home. The very last piece, she named it Monet's watercolor, but I like to call it the rebel finish. Once you put the wax on a piece of furniture, you are not supposed to paint over it. Wax is supposed to go on last. Wax will expand and contract with the temperature. If you paint over wax, you are risking the paint peeling up and cracking, risking ruining your finish. When you guys ask me about it, I always tell you, do it at your own risk. Dion took this piece that was painted with latex and she just put white wax all over it before she ever even started painting. And then she blended and it created this resist kind of finish. So I'm gonna let Dion tell you more about it. That thing had latex, guys. 
the cheap kind of latex on it. And I painted directly over that, but I started with wax. It's the wrong way, I know. There are rules, I get it, but sometimes art doesn't have rules. I just thought I'm gonna actually put wax on this whole piece first, and that's what I did. Yes, I had to let it dry, and then I put the paint over that, and I did things backwards because I wanted to see what it was gonna do, and that piece turned out way better than I expected. Ended up being um, a really quick sell too. But the lesson here is sometimes the rules are meant to be broken, especially in art. And I will see you next Wednesday with the macrame project. I still have some finishing touches to do, but unless I totally mess it up, I'm gonna keep it from my own house. I can't wait to share it with you. I'm spending money like I just got paid. Hundred dollar bills, tell them keep the change. Come on. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next video where I attempt to make Melanie's sofa. And for links to all the artists mentioned in this video, to find DIY paint near you or to sell it in your own store, click the link below. Thanks for watching. I just feel so good. good.